video chat will be up oh, there, there it is this and then this will be a video chat for funny days yeah so the the audio that we were recording will be available in the chat box for 30 days we're going to download it and turn it into a podcast i would say we'd make you famous but i can't make that guarantee <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Here we go. Hello. Boom. Hello. Boom. Hello. Hello. And welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I am your host, John Harris. On my right hand side is my right hand man, a Gabriel. Which is on the left side. You just moved over to my left side. So are, are you my left hand man? I don't even know if that's an appropriate <laughs> I'm thing. To... You, I'm not your left hand man. It's no. Just like I'll be on me. No, nobody wants to be a left hand man. Can you imagine such a thing? Maybe, <laughs> maybe in the conspiracy, there's a left hand man, but we're going to find out. Well, I got BRB, though. So. Okay, BRB. Uh, it's in Rock and Roll Podcast. Speaking of conspiracies, we have Craft in the Conspiracy, which is one heck of a name. It's not often that I can stop in the middle of an intro, Marcus, and say, that is a cool name. Yeah, thank you so much. I actually, myself and my vocalist came up with that name, like, maybe 10 years ago in high school. Those are the best ones. If I can think back to any time in my life where I came up with probably the best ideas for music with friends, it was in the middle of class, probably science lab, when we were supposed to be doing something productive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> While somebody else was blowing something up. Yeah, those are the best times. They sure are. Now, it looks like you boys have a new album called The Cosmic Key 2, which was released on August 28th via Inner Strengths Records. And right now, I kind of mentioned your name earlier, but right now, for everybody who's listening in, I'm being joined by Marcus. And together, we're going to share some more information about a couple of key tracks from the album, the album itself, what the boys have been up to this year. So, Marcus, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm excited, too. And... I guess let's just jump right into this first track, Cosmic Key 3, Dream Sequence. But I'm also kind of confused because the album is called Cosmic Key 2. So is it like dreams within a dream within a dream? Um, it's, um, it's So we're, we're aiming for like a concept type of feel with that. You know, like uh, we're inspired by like, for that uh, that format, some fans like the faceless and like um, the the contortionist. At the end, at the back end of their albums, they had like a section of it's the title of the album, and then they break it down into parts, like the titles. Like so, for example, the contortionist they had an album called Exoplanet, and then the back end of that album they had Exoplanet One, the name of the song Exoplanet Two, name of the song Exoplanet Three, but. We didn't really want to rip that off, but we just kind of were inspired by that. So we wanted to do that with our record, which is a concept album. Marcus, there is no stealing in artistry. There is only borrowing and inspiration. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Now, I mean, I'm listening to the track, or I have listened to the tracks, and it's absolutely incredible. I'm really thankful to David over at Earsplit for uh, you know allowing you to come onto the show, or, or inviting you, rather, to come onto the show. Um I mean, everything about it is just so ominous comes to mind. I mean, mm, crafting, yes. the cons crafting the Conspiracy is, is definitely a tone-setting band name. And then I'm looking at this artwork, and it's incredible. And I get this idea you know, going through, you know, like you had mentioned, you know, here's the album title, and then we're going to break it down, that there's a story here. Is this a concept album with a theme, and is it related to the artwork? Yes, it is. It's all tied in. Take us through it, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is the album. We, it was actually going to gonna be a full length record at one point, but we decided to split it in half because we wanted to create more content as well as just giving the listener time to breathe as far as in between releases. So um, what we did is. Um, we had the first half of the story in Cosmic Key Part 1, which we released last last spring. And then we uh, finished off the storyline in Cosmic Key Part 2, which was released last week. So, um, yeah. Um, the, and in regards to the album art, the, the, the main protagonist, is, which is named... Um, uh, his name is... Actually, let me look through my notes real quick. I've actually Marcus. forgot... Marcus, you don't even know your own protagonist's name. Yeah, his, his name is Ace. Sorry, I wrote the story. 
His name is Ace, and he's um, and the, on the cover of this new album. He's um, actually de- he's killing the the villain. You know, the villain's name is Serenesis, and he's uh, you know vac- vanquishing the villain right there on the on the on the album art. He sure is. Is this based on? Immediately, I'm thinking it's something historical. Is it something historical, or is it kind of like one of those historical fantasies where you've created something new, but it's being it's taken place in historical context? Um, sort of. It's, it's actually we're actually aiming for a, a sci-fi aspect feel, but the, the artist he. He drew it up in a cool way to where it's almost like a renaissance type of feel, which is cool, too, because, I mean, it can it can go either way. However, the Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, you know, now that you mentioned the sci-fi feel, I get it because you have multisyllabic song titles. <laughs> yes, sir. Autonomy of Ascension, Serenesis. And despite the fact that I can say these words, I'm afraid I don't even know what they mean. Um yes, Aberration. I'm so excited that you use the word aberration. That's not one that is in the you know the common vernacular. So that is fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. I guess maybe take us through this story. Is it an arc? Does it start from track one to track seven? Is it just as you had mentioned a sort of somewhat continuation from the the previous one, where maybe track one actually starts in the middle of the story? Yes, sir. So the prologue is the dead center of the of the of the whole storyline. So that's like the very middle of the story. Okay. Yes, sir. Maybe without giving... Up. Sorry? Yeah. I was going to say it picks up after part one, which is the first half of the re- of the storyline. Okay. The Cosmic Key storyline. Okay. Uh, now, I guess without giving away too much information, when we dive into these tracks on this particular album, I guess where are we at with the story? And maybe if you want to just keep it specific to the two tracks we're going to chat about today... Cosmic Key 3 dream sequence um, maybe we could start there what is the dream sequence and why this track to just to, to chat about today um, well we when in the process of writing this song it's, it's actually it's the final song on the album and we wanted to come out swinging so um, we wrote it in a way that would be power, it's powerful and hard hitting you know and uh, when we first when we finished it, we figured we should just put it out first. It was our favorite song, just uh, amongst the band members, and we figured it would be, um, you know, the fans would feel the same way. So, um, but we started. We wanted to just put it out first because, it, like I said, it it hits really hard hitting, and it and it pretty much sums up the whole storyline. So we figured out we figured that we could put it out first. And then just have the fans listen to it all at the same time. Whenever yeah, they're ready for that. And you mentioned that it's hard hitting, and it is. And I mean, part of aside from the arrangement, I think the arrangement probably is a little more hard hitting than obviously the guitar tone. But something that really struck me immediately was the production level on the record and the crushing guitar tone. And I've got here that you play the bass. Yes, sir. And I don't know if anybody out there in podcast land knows, but the majority of what you're hearing in metal records is the bass. It's incredibly important. Um, So, I mean, if you don't mind taking... (laughs) You're like, yeah, yeah. thank you for (laughs) noticing me. Um, It's, you know, we do do mixing and and mastering. And one of the questions that comes up is, how do I get that sound from a guitar player? Like, well, you're actually hearing the bass. You're actually hearing, you know, so... I guess maybe take us through the production level. What made this track so hard hitting? Is it the production that went into it? The 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 brutal bass tones, the guitar tones, the drum tones? Is it the the way you guys wrote the song? Did you have to rewrite it a few times? Um, no, we didn't really have to rewrite it a few times. Um, our guitarist, he's the main songwriter, so he wrote. <clears throat> he pretty much wrote it all in one sitting. You know, uh, but I think it's a little bit of everything as far as the production goes. Uh, I, I'd like to give a shout out to um, our our producer, actually. He, the guy who mixed and mastered it, it was Connor Reibling of, of Hollowed Studios, who actually did the mixing and mastering on this record. He did he did a killer job, and we we're really satisfied with that. But uh, as far as um, yeah, he he really brought it to life though, as far as the tones and everything, guitar tones and bass tones, it's all really layered pretty nicely 
to help bring out each characteristic of the instruments. So I was really happy about that. Yeah, did he do a lot of reamping, or is did you guys provide the source tones? Uh, we provided the source tones, and he reamped everything. Okay, very very cool yep. stuff. Now, Equilibrium Earthbound Two is kind of like you know uh, the Earthbound Two part is within the Equilibrium there, and then we have Christina Rotondo. How did she get involved? Maybe take us through that. Yeah, sure. Um, so I had been following her on YouTube for a while. And then um, she does YouTube covers and stuff. She's a great singer. She's uh, from um, she's from the UK, and um, uh, I noticed that she is offering um, you know guest features and stuff. So uh, and uh, she put her email there and everything. So I decided, hey, I shoot her email because we even, we wanted to have uh, female vocals on our on our record one day, and this came along, and I decided to choose her to do that for us. So I hit her up, and she. Laid her vocals down, and uh, I wrote the lyrics for that particular song, and I kind of figured out a little vocal pattern for her. And she, but she did the rest, and she did she did a great job, and, and that was it for that part. Yeah, I mean that's such an incredible story, especially for anybody out there who's thinking, "Man, I really need a insert here part." You know, I need exactly. I can't I can't growl, but I need somebody to growl, or I need you know whatever. Uh, and I find. A lot of times in chatting with bands such as yourselves, like, man, a female vocal would just sound killer right here. But do we know anybody? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's kind of an interesting thought. Like, was that something you guys were seriously considering? Or was it something you were just like, well, yeah, maybe sure. Female vocal. And you were like, I got somebody. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's pretty much how it went. You know, um, we, we had a, a couple other thoughts of. We wanted, but I, I was dead set on her because she was the most accessible <laughs> out of anyone else. Yeah, did that surprise you that how accessible she was? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, and the, the, the fact that um, she's always busy with making videos and stuff and and doing her thing, and no, and the fact that she's not super well known yet, so that that kind of helped in our favor. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now, I guess my next question, this is, I don't know, maybe a weird question. Maybe it's not. But what was it like reaching out to somebody, especially across the pond? You know, She's in the UK, you're in the States, and you're saying, hey, we're in this band. I, I don't know. I, I almost kind of feel like I would be self-conscious. Like, oh my God, is she going to like my music? Is she going to like our production level? Is she going to be going to be up for it? Um, and I'm, I guess my question is... <laughs> What was that? What was that process like for you guys? Because you you reached out to her and said, "Hey, I've got lyrics. I've got a melody idea. This is where we'd like you to sing." And I mean, it sounds so easy. Was it really just that easy? I mean, I guess take us through the psychology of of making it happen. Did she just send tracks back and you guys mix it in? I mean, what happened? Yeah, that's that's pretty much exactly how it went, man. Yeah, you hit it right on the head. <laughs> it just sounds so easy. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not easy, but I mean we just have to, you know, just have to go for it and see what happened, <laughs> and then it is worked it, out. So yeah, this is true. Was, I mean, being on this show, I've heard everything from we wanted to work with this guest vocalist, and we sent them a song, and they rejected it, and then they rejected the next song, and they rejected the next song, and I'm like, well, why did you want to work with this person so badly? Well, we love their voice, and you know, four or five songs later, they finally agree to something, but. Um, okay. This is this is cool, uh, you know that she was she was able to do that. I know, right? It's it it's just it was really cool. She's really nice and everything too, so that's a plus. <laughs> definitely a plus, definitely a plus. Now, I guess my big question is, you know, out of the the album, I'll call it an album. Do you guys yeah. call it an EP or an album? Uh, at this point, we're calling it an album. <laughs> yeah, might as well. I figure so. I mean, it's seven songs. In the vinyl days, that kind of you know contributes to to being an album. Um, out of all the songs to to release as singles, I guess why these two tracks? Um, I felt like it. The um, they they kind of what's the word? They display two the two the two dynamics that we we're going for. Okay, so you have Dream Sequence, which is a heavier song. Uh, darker, heavier track, brooding song, 
then you go to equilibrium it's you know it's more upbeat kind of and then it has like the metalcore vibe with the female vocals on it and that that's kind of uh, the other flip side of what we're trying to go for now we're not now but like it's, it's a new it's kind of a newer thing so we're trying to see what the audience would think about that on the second as a second single okay very very cool stuff now I guess my next question is because we've chatted about the album, chatted about the tracks. Mm-hmm. Something that you had mentioned, you know, at the time of recording this, the album was released about a week ago, and I have a kind of a combination question for you, Marcus, because for some bands, they were going to release their album way earlier in the year, and then you know they had to delay it, and for other bands, they were planning on releasing it later on in the year anyway. Yeah, so okay. I guess, so I guess my question is quasi what's it like finally having the album released and then it, with relation to that was it always the plan to release it you know late august or did you have to reshuffle some things because of the way 2020 has unfolded um well um i it, first of all it feels amazing having it out already um uh we actually um, stumbled around there for a while trying to release the whole thing um, that's and then that's part of the reason why I'll be split it in half and everything like that. But um, as far as when we had this, the project um, straight away in our heads for part two, um, it, it, if we would have released it earlier in the year, it, w- it just simply wouldn't have been able to happen. Um, it wasn't ready yet, so uh, we had it set for had it set for August. That's whenever we actually had it ready to go. So um, that it just worked out to have it out in august because we we finished i think we wrapped it up uh before the summertime and then we wanted to go to get the we got we got signed to inner strength and in, back in june or uh may or june and uh and then wanted to go ahead and get the promo ready and that's whenever we set up for august to release okay very cool now kind of uh going back to my original not my original question but my kind of side question to that is mm-hmm. has this year turned out to be some of the interesting thing is I'm chatting with some bands and, and they're saying that it's kind of a blessing in disguise because, you know, a uh, number of reasons. It allowed us to t- spend more time on an album or it spent, allowed us to reconsider what our strategy was. So has, exactly. this, has this year just completely reshuffled everything for you guys or has it been a blessing in disguise for any number of reasons? A um, little bit of both. I mean... Um we we planned on touring in September, but um, uh, it just fell apart because due to everything that's going on. But also, I, I feel like it's a good thing because um, the, the the way things are going down is because it like, gives us time to reload, you know, reload and get the album going, getting getting more hype for, for when we do tour, and just just uh, getting everything down packed, like musically, uh, practice a lot, get tighter with each other. And uh, just, um, you know, I'm up too. That's another big thing for us. And also just uh, connecting with the fans too, reconnecting, getting good, you know, just uh, building relationships with the fans is a, is a big thing for us as, as well. And um, yeah, that's, I think it's the best thing in the skies, definitely. Well, that brings up an interesting question because one of the challenges or the unique challenges, especially with the summertime, how a lot of bands connect with fans, as I'm sure you know, is getting out there and playing shows and shaking hands, you know, kissing, what is it, kissing babies and shaking hands or whatever. Sure. Uh, all, all, the, all the people bringing babies to the Craft and the Conspiracy shows in the mosh pit there. Uh, <laughs> so how are you guys going about doing that during this time? How are you connecting with fans, staying in touch with fans and continuing to to build that fan base during this time, uh, we're, we're it's it's definitely harder, like you said. But uh, we're just trying to build our social media game as best as we can right now. Um, just um, we're trying to we're trying to film playthroughs, you know, um, instrument playthroughs. Like we we've released a couple good guitar playthroughs. Our drummers filming drum playthroughs. I'm gonna try to start doing some more things with my bass guitar. And my setup and stuff. We're gonna try to do some rig rundowns and stuff like that. You know, get it all filmed and make videos, and kind of spread them out throughout the the rest of the year. 
stuff like that just to have content, you know, try to push content out for the fans. Mm-hmm. That's one way to try to do things. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And something else you mentioned was you guys have a new guitar player. So is this gentleman featured on the recording on this album? Uh, no, he, he wasn't on this recording. He wasn't on the on the record. But no, okay. he's here now for live and for the rest of the way. <laughs> His yeah. name is actually Moral support. He's there for moral support. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Well, I mean, we chatted about the two key tracks. We chatted about the album. We chatted about what you guys have been up to during uh, this time, during this year. Uh, so I think we've we've run the full gamut. I think we've we've covered just about everything. Is there anything else maybe that's come to mind that I missed that you want to chat about? Um, no, I think that's about it. Unless you want to have any other questions about the concept of the record, but uh, I, think, I think we covered most of everything. Groovy. Um, other than, I mean. Should we expect maybe another continuation of this theme, or is this theme done? Um, I believe this this concept, this story, particular storyline, is over now. Um, this is this is this is about wrapped it up, wrapped up that story. But moving forward, I'd I'd like to create a full length record, but have it maybe non conceptual, maybe not as conceptual, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it totally makes sense. I mean. You know, it's cool to have a concept record all the time, but I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. We, this took us about since since the release of our first EP, we started writing this album back in like 2016 or 17, and we didn't get it all finished until now. So that's that's about three three years worth of of work on that record, Cosmic Key. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of always curious. You know, that you mentioned that uh, you know three four years or whatever in 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 writing. What's that like? I mean, at a certain point. Did you guys decide on what songs were going to make it? Are there songs that are still kind of just lagging behind the orphan children? Um, yeah, there was a little bit of that there. There for a while, we we uh, had to take a little like a kind of a hiatus point for us just to kind of refresh ourselves back in like 2018, I believe it was. But uh, we we just started playing. We started in between all of that though. We played a lot of shows too, so that was another thing. We were playing a lot of shows and doing little mini, uh, mini tours here and there, like little weekend runs and stuff like that. But uh, once we finally got our head straight, that's when we finally buckled down and finished the record. Okay. Very cool stuff. All right. Well, Marcus, that concludes all of my questions. So thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Go ahead and stop, please, sweetie.